we have something in common with you, hopefully, and that is that we have a set of values and we have a vision. Um, and we're driven by those, hopefully, in everything we do. But I think it all has to do with values. What do you stand for and who do you want to be? And our values are credibility, spirit of adventure, team play, and long-term view. And I think to engage with social entrepreneurs, something that is outside the company, outside the value chain. It all started in Davos uh, during the World Economic Forum. This chap is a Scot. His name is Mel Young and he is the founder of uh, Homeless World Cup. Um, at that point, he was just starting. This was in 2003, I believe. And the only uh, prerequisite is that you're homeless. Most of them have a drug problem, they have a, perhaps a mental health problem, um, or all, all of the above, and many other issues as well. Last year, um, almost 70 countries uh, took part. Uh, but this was the outset, and I quickly understood that <coughs> what he needed to do was to grow, and that what he was looking for was something that we could contribute. He needed uh, somebody who could actually push him and measure him, uh, look for impact, look for scale. Um, and this is something that we do in our regular business, so this is not something different. So what actually feeds what? What loop are you in here? I mean, you're in a loop where you see the results, and it makes you do more, but it's also, you're actually also fed by your personal impressions. And the impressions of Katinka and Eivind and uh, my daughter Katarina and, uh, and others who actually take part, who sit on the boards, who meet the, the young people uh, <coughs> who were actually impacted by our work. What keeps you going uh, is probably more the change you see on the ground rather than the change you see in a PowerPoint or in a spreadsheet. In order to engage somebody else who are looking for perhaps more of an investment, more of a return type of uh, entry point, you need to show the numbers. So we do have access to all the people, we do have access to the best resources, people who can actually sit on the board and who are relevant to growing each social entrepreneur. Why did, why did we choose social entrepreneurs uh, instead of perhaps some other type of impact investment? Um, we chose them because we think we can do more of a difference to them, additionality. That we actually have something they need that they can't get anywhere else. Uh, they can get it somewhere else, but they cannot perhaps get it as effectively as they can get it from us. Um, because we deliver business development skills finance, recruiting, advice, etc., etc. They're driven by social results, so they have a, they're clearly, and many of them are a little bit uh, oblivious to what it takes to actually get to the social results. Um, so they're partly ideologically driven, they're driven by emotions, they're driven by an experience with a family member, um, some are driven by the need to find a job, uh, to say, um, but they're very much eager to change something. But in order to make change, you need to show that you're going to be there. You're going to be around, not for next month, but you're going to be there for year two and three and four as well. I think in terms of changing the system, I think the best we can hope for in many cases is to change how the system thinks. The way it thinks about value, the way it thinks about the value of people, of moving people out of the welfare system instead of keeping them inside. We would like to see people get on with their lives, you know, get on with their life, their unique life, instead of being only on benefits. Here are some of the social entrepreneurs that we have been working with. Here are the current investments, and here are some of the, the I would say the past investments, that's uh, wrong. But they have matured to a level where they are, where they, have, they actually have a sustainable model. Some of them are completely independent and sustainable, like the street magazine in, in Stavanger, which is actually running a profit, which is actually reinvesting the profits in another social entrepreneur. So here we actually helped or contribute to trigger a social entrepreneur that becomes a serial social entrepreneur. They come in because they can all be scaled, they can all make a real difference, 
um, and they can all become sustainable. You need to take risks to make a difference. Um, you're starting from something unproven to making something that's going to be, you know, the best thing since sliced bread and then some. So, Katinka? If you gather them, you try to box them in. You'll see that they'll end up in these three boxes, which means some of them will be working in the prevention field. So preventing children and youngsters from getting um, you know, on the outside of society, more or less, in, in one way or the other. And several of them will be working with maturing or actually learning children and youngsters how to tackle their life, their emotions, uh, or even how to tackle the workforce, how to become actually uh, able to work. Some of them actually go out there and create jobs for, say, ordinary jobs for extraordinary people, as we like to say. And we see that we need to be close to them, to be able to build that partnership, to invest with them in different, uh, in different areas. We're working with, as Johan mentioned, non-financial support, which is a really important part of the work we do. But of course, they very often come here because they've heard about the grants, and they've heard about the investments, uh, and we are happy to be able to be so flexible as to put together a nice package for them on the financial tools side. So we select them for one year at the first time, uh, and then we work closely with them to find the proof of concept, or rather, they would have to convince us about that one on the beforehand, but we need to mature it. Then we work on the business plan, the strategy, and as Johan was telling, these guys are not always that interested in Excel spreadsheets. Working with the management on how to be a professional management, how to work with their economy, um, how to build that, and we've seen that, for instance, the Forskir Fabriken, like Hanna will be presenting, it took t 10 years, actually, to build the economy to a solid base for Forskabaviki. Then, it's of course time to see, do we still believe that they are the right company for us? And do they still believe that FERD can make that change for them that they're looking for? And if we both agree on continuing the partnership, we'll make a deal for three years, where they will be safe, in a way, in our portfolio, uh, and we'll guarantee them our financial and non-financial support for those three years. And we'll put in a board member from FERD, because we want to be active involved in the strategy development, in the real business of the company. And we're working to professionalize the management of the company during these three years. And also, of course, the systems, working with professionalizing every part of the company. And we've set up from the very first start gatherings of the portfolio and what you see of energy in those meetings where they meet each other and start thinking across um, or between the companies, it's great fun. And then we're really pestering them in measuring the results. Each year you have to improve in how to measure, how to actually go out there and be able to say to the community how you're making results and societal changes. And then Hopefully, when those three years has passed, either we see that they need us for three more years, and we need them to work with them for three more years, or we can actually say, you're, you're done, uh, you're all there, you're set for the next part of the journey. Either that will be with some other investor, or they will be on their own and manage, uh, and they go into our other money uh, portfolio. That means we keep the network, they keep in the network, can attend the gatherings. We keep contact with the portfolio. It could be that some of the companies from the portfolio will be uh, investable to us or to others with real equity and actually also make a profit. Who knows? So this is how we work with the portfolio. And this is the reason for doing it, um, which Johanna was mentioning as well. It's to be close to them, we see that it works, we get the feedback that having business minds on their boards and being really pestered and being worked with, they're not always that fond of our questions, but afterwards they all agree that it's worth 
worth the effort. Um, and that we make value for them.